Call this meeting to order from November the 3rd, 2020. Um, we have an amended agenda. Do we yes. have an addition? There is one addition, a late addition. Okay. So resolve that the amended agenda for the November 3rd, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. Councilor White, Councilor Friesen. Councilor White and Friesen? Resolved that the minutes of the October 20th, 2020 regular council meeting and the October 27, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. <coughs> Number four, receptions of delegation. Uh, oh, sorry, reception of delegation and hearings. Tonight we have with us Ms. Burkhart in regards to fifth or parking on Fifth Avenue or parking in general. So, uh, Ms. Burkhart, Burkhart, welcome to uh, our council meeting. Thank you. So, what I'll let you do is uh, make your presentation, and then if there's any questions or answer or questions afterwards, you can respond or, or any questions towards council, and then. Um, Council will not necessarily give you a response tonight, yep. but we'll have a debate about it, I'm sure, about it in the near future. Okay? Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me here tonight. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Dr. Burkhart. I'm the owner operator of Dean's Iron Slide Dr. Burkhart at 125th Avenue North here in Sonic. I'm here tonight to talk to you about parking. I've worked as a hairstylist for many years in Sonic, and parking for clients has never really been an issue, so it was never really looked at as a concern. In my business, appointments can take upwards of two hours, and I've personally worked on clients for five hours. And um, I understand that parking limits two hours, but this has never been an issue. Uh, on October 7th of this year, a client came in for a 10 a.m. appointment, and at 12.03 was issued a parking ticket. That was three minutes, like three minutes after the two hour parking limit. And I feel that is completely unfair. Uh, even if the appointment is only two hours, is often maybe run around the two-hour mark. Three minutes can be the time that I'm running behind. Um, at this time with COVID-19, we are mandated to do extra cleaning and sanitation, and I just can at times push my appointments. Um, often they can take over two hours, and I can't ask the client to leave a salon with processing color or perm in their hair just to move their vehicle. Um, many of my clients are elderly, and it takes them some time to get from point A to point B. And now there is no longer a public parking lot on Fifth Avenue, so parking on the street is where they park because otherwise they're quite a ways away and a lot of my clients couldn't walk that far to get to the salon. Um, the reason my husband and I purchased this building was to offer my business in the long term. I've rented for many years before and after kids and uh, finally thought, okay, let's, let's do this. And uh, my business is about self-care, counseling, and relaxation, and constantly fearing the fact that you might get a hundred dollar parking ticket. And the feet set, and I honestly find myself now looking out the window, checking to see if my client's gonna get a parking ticket, because it's, it so distracts me from my clients. Um, I'm not asking that you change the two hour parking limit. I actually feel that would defeat the purpose, because we have many people that work and live on that street park there all day, and honestly, it happens already. We look across the street, and there's a person that lives there that parks there all day, almost every day. <laughs> and uh, that can that happens a lot, actually, is where people that work there they'll park for hours on end, and then that takes up spaces for clientele. Uh, what I would like to propose is parking passes. Passes that can allow a client into my, in my salon to park for an extended period of time on the day of their appointment. Uh, the passes would only be issued to a client whose appointments would exceed the two hours, and I would be willing to print up uh, passes, have them signed and dated so that they are not used on other days and be previously uh, used. Uh, 
at this interesting and uh, very stressful time, we were mandated to run at lower capacity, generating less income, and it's really disheartening that clients can be punished for supporting us at, at this. And um, I did like make an example of what I was thinking for a parking pass, and uh, something that we just handed out to them at the time of their appointment. Did you pass that around, please? Yeah, and I can get to you. And then, um, yeah, that's basically it. And I'd like to thank you for being here this evening. All right, thank you. Uh, Council. Council White. Uh, just a question. You see, uh, some of the closest available parking for your clients is quite some distance. How, how far is that? Like, it would, like a parking lot would be. Right after. Mm -hmm. right. What should they have to walk around? And like for elderly people, that's. That was my next question. A lot of the firm, elderly people that. And that's the ones that are in there for the. Okay. These people who uh, park often in front of your property there and abuse the two hour parking, are you suggesting that's often that happens? And it's the same people regularly? Have you considered calling our bylaw officer? I haven't in the past, but... Uh, Just a thought. Yeah, okay. no. I've got my two questions. I thought of it actually when I worked at the last place on the pit. Because actually it was my landlord. <laughs> that would do that. And so I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just call the bylaw officer. And that was the end of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Do um, it's people have managed to find spaces, and so it's never been a big issue. It's just that getting a ticket three minutes after the two hour limit, even like it wouldn't have even felt so bad if it was at three hours or three and a half hours because that's an hour over the parking limit, right? And it was at 12.03, so we know it was, it was three minutes. And that was what was actually great. Um, and I have thought about coming here before because of, yes, there is people that park on the street. I just didn't want to be a, one fighting the neighbors. <laughs> How often does this happen? The parking on the street? Yeah, where people, you, because of whatever circumstances, with a little overtime, you know, you want oh, to. It can happen every day. One to one or two a day? Yeah. Depending on, like, a lot of times, because I'm a woman, my daughter, because of the different clientele yeah, um, we have, it can be one of us who have one match. Any, Thank any you. questions uh, uh, for Ms. Burkhardt should stick to what the presentation is about. So, anybody have any other questions? Council Boreal. Um, have you. There, there's a, a vacant lot, like I guess it's a private lot now that's vacant. Have you approached that owner of that property to see if there could be an agreement made there with yourself or um, or a couple stalls? Well, right now he's been doing a lot of renovations and so there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, last winter I actually, I had asked if perhaps he wanted, if I could clean his sidewalk all winter if I could use one for like a couple hours a day and they just the answer I got was we don't have any renovations that we've done. Um and at this time because you know I just bought that building and it needs some work too. And so my <coughs> outdoor isn't accessible for clients so but they can't walk through that parking lot because there's a snow fence to get so, like, shouldn't they park to mine? They would then have to go all the way around. Uh, second question. Um, and I appreciate bringing uh, an idea for a solution or something like that. But, um, but how do you see this envisioning, or um, so that we don't have a catalyst of all every other business now, like restaurants and all that stuff that are ordering two-hour parking? We're not asking for the same thing, and then we're sort of defeating the whole to our parking and the methodology of keeping traffic moving and all of that. So. I was trying to think about that. And 
honestly, don't 100% know. But I was thinking, there's not a lot that would be needing a two hour, right? Restaurants, if you're if you're over two hours, it would usually be in the evening when you need that parking. It doesn't matter so much. And if my clients come in at 4:30, then it's not a big deal. That like I'm like shaking right now because I haven't eaten supper because I've been traveling so long. <laughs> but um, so that like evening appointments, it's not a biggie, right? Like they they're not going to get ticketed. But um, there's there's another hairstylist on the street that maybe he wants to do that. I'm not really sure. I was just thinking about myself at that point. <laughs> Any other questions? Councilor oh, DeLore. Would would your pass would it extend it for another hour or I guess or until the It would basically have to be for a period of time there with the slot because it honestly we can put an approximate on it mm -hmm. because we know when they're coming in. Uh, but and we do know what we book times, so but often I'm like running to board meeting because I'm like, <laughs> I'm like because I was running behind. But if I have hair is those of you that have ladies that get their hair done often and understand how long it can take in a salon. Um, and depending on the service, it can be two and a half, three and a half, five hours sometimes. But we could do it approximate. Time it just would be obviously established. Okay, further questions? Okay, Councilor Freezer. I would like to see that. Sorry. Councilor Delorier. Would if this were to move forward, would would having one pass out at a time be be viable or do you have multiple it clients? Would be right now, because I have two stylists. Not often is it two that would be um, parking at that extended period. But once in a while it could be that we booked a client that would be in there that long. So you'd never have more than two passes out? No. And, and would you require the passes to come back in? I could. Because I'm, I'm thinking you'd put, yeah. they're going to run to Red, Red Apple and then where's one? And, right. Yeah. Councilor Frieza. Um, usually you know how long it's going to take to do Approximately. So, is there any way of putting a time on here, like 10 to 1? Like, I think, like I was saying, I can put an approximate. Yeah. But, and then there has been times when it's like, that didn't work. Do you have more time in your day? <laughs> and it extends, right? Like, that, and that doesn't happen often, thank goodness. But, yeah, most of the time we can do it fairly accurate time frame. Oh, yeah. 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 Councilor Gray. Um, do you or does your customer have any plans for what they're going to do with the fact that they're going to be I'm not sure. I chatted with her the day of and um, she was having some interesting conversations. Space. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure there. I haven't actually talked to her since then. She just told me that um, she was told that this business is not complained. There's no reason to accept it. And we wouldn't have complained about parking because for all the years I've been in Swan River, I've never had a client have a parking ticket when I was on Main Street. Actually, I used to add up one client had a parking ticket, but because she parked only yellow, it wasn't because she parked for more than two hours. She was parking in very not great spot for the town. Um, and that was 20 some years ago. And then I was, I've been back in town. Um, Because I, I, I most of the time it's like two, two, three hours, so the there, so they come two hours early. Okay. Yeah. But I get to go back. 
Council Morio. Um, two things. It's good to hear that we have an effective bylaw officer now that's actually, yes, doing, actually doing what they're hired for, which yeah. is great to hear. Um, but as you're talking through with your past, so potentially you're having a customer now go to their from their car to your business back and forth potentially three times, correct? Because if they come to your store, you know what? To be very honest, if it's an elderly person, I won't go out there because sometimes I have to walk them out anyways. Because like I'm not booking someone else in their apartment time, right? So I will, I, if I have to, I can walk them out. If I know they're going to be there for that extended period, because they're not going to, it's not going to be seven times a day that I have to do that. Um, and it's not really that big, but. Uh, but potentially for any like any customer, yeah. they'd be coming in, maybe potentially grabbing a pass, we'll put it back in their car, and then Sometimes have to can, hand it in, so that'd be three trips. Cash and come back anyways. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Okay, anything further? Okay, well, <clears throat> anything last uh, from you at all? Uh, I don't think so. I know it's it's probably something that, you know, let's see, I might not be able to do it. I just. It's always been a, a bit of a worry for me because I, you know, have our women's to take that extended period of time, and I, and it's so hard to know what to even ask for. This is why I came up with this idea because of if you can just expect, extend it for everybody, it's going to be like I said, and there is very frustratingly people that park on the street all day and people that don't. <laughs> but uh, um, so I'll leave it up to you, and I okay. understand either way because I know what it's like to work in corporate. Uh, <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, thank you again thank for you. making your presentation, and Council uh, at one of our future committee will hold meetings. I mean, I imagine we'll be uh, discussing this and uh, and uh, seeing what we can come out of it. So. Do you know approximately how long? Well, our next meeting is next Tuesday, unless another member of council wants to bring it up tonight. But uh, uh, next Tuesday is our next committee okay. meeting, so I'm sure we'll be discussed then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming again. Okay, moving on. Six communications. Result the letter from the Minister of Municipal Relations dated October the 22nd, 2000. Regarding the Manitoba Restart Program and Federal Safe Restart Funding, be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion. This is the uh, dollars we're talking about with, uh, through the federal government for the $250,000 to help us with COVID. Yeah. All in favor? Opposed? This is carried. 6.2 resulted the building permits 9020 through 9620 with a total estimated value of $74,815 be received. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? Councilor Gray? Can I simply be reflected as one of the building permits is mine, so I should be noted as abstaining from both the discussion. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Gray. Discussion? No discussion on the report. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.2 or 7.3 council reports. Councillor Delorier. Uh, nothing to report. The only other meeting I had was the Cal meeting last week that we all attended. Okay. Councillor White. Uh, relatively busy. Uh, 21 October, we had the PMH meeting through Zoom. An interesting bit of data is that roughly 40% of the nurses in the Swanvale area are eligible for retire, so it's a dilemma, it's a big problem. So if anybody in the listing public uh, knows somebody who's a nurse or wants to practice nursing in the Swan Valley or PMH as a whole, 
I love you too for those names to me and I can follow up with it. But over the COVID protocols, I don't know how often we all have to be told, wash, socially distant, wear a mask. They're not, uh, they're not putting us in jail. They tell us how far to drive, how fast to drive. It's not a big deal and I'm disappointed in some of the comments. So uh, we also, the PMH is looking for a new CAO. Uh, Penny Gilson has retired, I think, as of April. She'll be stepping down. So uh, part of the issue, uh, not with her, with the uh, COVID is that with the hospitals filling up, there's no room for elective surgery. So if you have a broken leg or something like that's a possibility, you may not be able to get in for quite some time to get that repaired. So yeah, there, there's uh, it's certainly debate about the COVID issues, but the hospitals are filling, the medical professionals are working overtime and it's not good for them. On the 23rd, I went to the uh, so October to the business consortium and uh, there's a lot of COVID talk again and one of the concepts to reduce crime and help people who are in need. So I appreciate the goals of the business consortium. Then October the 17th, some of that got out of order. I met with uh, Chief Fedorchuk and I know we talked about it cow, but for the listening audience, uh, Chief Fedorchuk, our fire chief has now been elected president, president of the Manitoba Fire Chiefs Association and will be representing uh, Manitoba at national conventions also. So uh, hats off to Chief Fedorchuk. We talked about parking bylaws, which is perfect that it came up today, COVID protocols, and uh, his office generally is closed to the public, so there will be a lot of tourists there. And November 2nd, uh, Councillor Mario was kind enough to uh, take me for a tour of the, uh, the Swan Valley air system, airline, and the things that are happening out there for a potential airline development. And uh, they're cleaning the dirt up, they're moving things around, there's a lot of things happening there. And that, that's such a vital thing for our community for bringing, for example, we don't have the CT scan yet, we'll hopefully get that, medical professionals, any number of people who come here to work. And then I had a tour, Council Morio and I went to a tour at the pool, and uh, Brendan Fedorchuk did an exemplary job of explaining what's happening. He knows how every little box in there does, how it works, how it subtracts, how the chemicals are added and not added. And uh, what a thorough and very uh, informative hour or so on that tour. Made us wear hard hats and masks, which is perfectly fine. But uh, hats off to Brendan and his team but I think it was just an exemplary work. Thank you. Councillor Gray. I don't know a lot before it rises both in meetings. Sometimes this week we talk about the, what we call in a, a different meeting. Uh, some services continues to you know, progress. I attended the same meeting with all rest of so reporting to you seems ridic ridiculous and redundant. Uh, on rise, if there's any issues with uh, that forum, if any of the members can attend, then just let me know. I'll be more than glad to attend. Okay. Okay. Uh, Councillor Friesen. I just had one meeting, and it was actually yesterday with Community Care, and uh, they gave me a cheat sheet <coughs> to tell you that at the Friendship Center they purchased 110 pumpkins, and they ended up with 120 that they gave out to families. Uh, the Kinsman gave them five hundred dollars, and they had a whole bunch of donations of chips and candy from Ace Home Hardware, Giant Tiger. Um, they gave out five hundred feet bags and had seven thousand hits on Facebook, and that was all instead of the Spooktoberfest at the museum. This is what they did instead. So if anybody needs any more information on what it was spent where, I have that here. Uh, other than that, that's it, thanks. Council Morio, thank you. <clears throat> well, nothing much for me, it was just our cow meeting um, that's been produced and reported on from last Tuesday. And as Mr. White said, I took on Mr. Uh, Brendan's offer to take the progress report to the Aquatic Center just to see what's going on there it was very informative. So I thank him for that and uh, appreciate what he does. Okay. Well, thank you for doing that. Is that everything? Yeah. Uh, for me, I guess, uh, other than <clears throat> what was already reported, I'd like to uh, congratulate our Swan Valley Rotarians for 75 years in the Swan River Valley uh, and all they've done. They've done numerous projects uh, that we have benefited. 
whole Swan River Valley, including the town of Swan River, including the, the Rotary Rotary Park that we have, that have they have uh, done a huge investment there, and people have enjoyed it for, for generations. November is also an annual event in, in, involving the growing of mustaches during the month of November to raise awareness of men's health issues, <clears throat> uh, including cancer and uh, men's suicide. And uh, this uh, event uh, gains attraction of many individuals fundraising for those important uh, tasks. But uh, our Swan Valley, uh, our Swan River Fire Department is fundraising currently, which they have done in the past with the pink shirts and, and so forth. And this year it's the, the mask, which is fitting with the mustaches on them, and they're uh, selling those to, to raise uh, awareness and funds for this event. So I encourage you all to uh, reach out to our fire department and, and check out one of their masks. I think there was one circulating in the room here earlier, so I think we believe they, they're selling them for $20. <clears throat> and also next week, uh, next Wednesday, is November the 11th. It's time for us to all uh, take a pause and, and reflect on the men and women who have uh, dedicated their, their lives uh, and also made the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice, for our freedoms that we have today. So uh, we thank all of those people. I'll start with the light. So, Corey, relative to November the 11th, is the Remembrance Day ceremony still going to occur uh, at the Legion? No, I don't believe so. Go ahead. Only at the center. Outside. Five can go in. Five. Otherwise, it's all outside. Thank you, Councilor Fraser. Okay, CEO report. Is there anything there? Uh, I've just been busy with the new the changes going on the orange restricted zone code, so just making adjustments as necessary there. Um, also, the <coughs> website uh, launched today, the new update one, we're still working out some kinks on there, but if you check that out, the new app, or updated app and website should be available, um, should be there today, and it so should be much more user friendly, um, if anybody has any you know, comments, suggestions of other things we should include, but um, hopefully it makes it much easier for the residents to find garbage schedules, uh, council meeting, videos, Permits, that kind of thing, that's what we're trying to try and get it fillable forms, that sort of thing, so they can do everything online and submit for those that have that capacity. Thank you. Is that everything? Okay, 8.1. <clears throat> At the request of Council, Ken Kirkpatrick, safety officer, will be made available to provide info on the uh, business uh, continuity plan and answer some questions. So come uh, before us, Mr. Kirkpatrick. So this is uh, something that we worked on since the beginning of, of the COVID crisis, and, uh, and and we've been working on it. I think it was important for a council not only to, to rehear what uh, we've been planning, but also for the community to know that uh, our administration also has uh, this plan in place. Um, yeah, I was um, <clears throat> going to prepare a few notes that hopefully uh, without any specific questions that we would have a few after it was done yeah. and uh, just to bring you all up to speed as to um, <clears throat> the plan we have in place in working right now for our COVID response for the council and our services um, and staff. So in March uh, this year our ministry and staff gathered on an almost daily basis and we assessed our actions and needed that we needed to take um, to lower our chance of transmission in the valley. Well, we had no cases at the time and didn't for quite some time. We got out in front of this and uh, using provincial orders and guidelines, uh, we developed um, the request of the mayor COVID response plan, um, now known as our business continuity plan, which we've been developing through the course of the year for other hazards as well. And the idea, of course, of the business continuity plan is to have a plan in place if it disrupts the services of the Thomas one of those residents. The services we provide, water, sewer, uh, garbage collection, all these things that we collectively deal with as part of our 
our citizens. So, and it's it's mandated by the uh, not to the government uh, legislation in terms of emergency management. We have to have an emergency response plan, and we have to have a big continuity plan. So we've been all this through. The council's already approved this plan and did it quickly for me, and that's all been uh, approved by DMO already. So we're we're good with that. We met our deadline easily, and uh, so the. Our response here at the town has always been guided by the provincial health orders of the day. And the orders have changed, our responses have been reevaluated. Um, for the most part, we've been extra cautious and had uh, what I would probably consider a moderate response level, whereby we had determined what we thought was a low and moderate and high risk. And based on that, we also uh, uh, established what we felt were our critical, non-critical, essential, um, those types of services that we offer. We had to break it down like that because some things will become critical and they're the ones, the others are going to suffer if it comes to that. So we had to do that and we had to present a, uh, a risk level. We never felt we were in a moderate risk level or a high risk level. All that's changed in the last few days. Um, we have been operating on a moderate risk level and uh, We've been trying to stay out in front of this right from the start. So, how do we do it? Uh, the department managers know their work, they know their loads, they know their people, and so they give the input uh, and uh, what types of uh, measures are going to affect their operations and, and how they can provide services. So, public health health orders are taken into consideration. We're monitoring that daily. Um, and then management court decides at what risk level we're at and what next steps we need to take. And so uh, as that situation's evolved in our health region, we've been doing that uh, continuously uh, and uh, we've managed to implement various protocols that we feel are meeting and exceeding the, the provincial guidelines. So, and what are we doing right now? Um, just to update you on a few things, uh, the Centennial Union is following the return to play protocols that were put in place in August so that we could have the rink open, hockey could start. Um, so those protocols are still being followed. Um, this includes wearing a mask at all times inside the arena, even in the stands. It uh, includes, you can only take your mask off if you want to eat or drink. Physical distancing marker, markers have been installed in all the bleachers to try and help guide people in the distances. Eh? Um, of course, on November 2nd, which is yesterday, uh, we moved to 25% capacity, which we started probably on the Friday night game, I believe. We went to 25% early. Um, I thought that would be a proactive. We, they make announcements on the PA system reminding people of the rules constantly. Uh, cancellation of player and fan interactions after games, none of that takes place. In regards to these rules, and as a Stampeder State season ticket holder, I, I've been watching. <clears throat> I've seen people doing a great job wearing their masks, and I think there may be a couple others that can attest to that. Um, physical distancing is difficult. But people are trying, you know, and with your mask on, as the words say, if you can't maintain six feet, you wear a mask, which everybody is doing. So there are some weak spots in that, but people are trying because they want hockey. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I want hockey too, but uh, this is far more important than hockey. Um, they have sign in sheets um, that are required to sign in at the door, so there's a tracking tracking papers on people. The staff uh, sanitizes the lobby areas after games, dressing rooms, players' benches, washrooms, other touchable services. And they use a checklist to make sure nothing is missed. Hand sanitizer is available. Limited two persons in the washroom at a time. Um, physical distancing after the food news. Um, they're counted as they come in the door so you don't exceed capacities. Uh, I keep saying we, I guess I feel like I'm on the board of directors or something, but I'm not. Uh, so essentially, the teams are in their own bubble and don't interact with fans. 
going around of the staff and outside came to expect to follow our rules as they do when they go for example in the labor there's no fans allowed in the board. So different rings have the different protocols. Um, public works uh, I've got some procedures that they've recently been updating for their staff. They stay on top of their staff in terms of how we're managing because some of their uh, their services are really critical, like water and sewer, of course. And we don't want to lose we don't want to lose a, a, an operator. We certainly don't want to lose two operators. And we're comfortable we lose three operators to this. So they have staggered work times. They have uh, they're not allowed to coffee together for the most part. They're kept away from the other public works staff as best as possible, physical distancing and so on and so forth. Uh, right now I believe they've been instructed to have two people in a truck they gotta wear a mask. They're in the truck. Cleaning supplies are available to start and end times for work are staggered again to limit exposure to those. Um, they try not to assemble in the coffee room, which is now starting to get cold, so that makes it really cold. So some of the things you're doing, and, and that staff is updated on a regular basis as, as again, the guidelines change for us. So um, that's off to what they're doing. Water treatment plant, of course, the operators are, uh, are under special scrutiny for that sort of thing. And again, we don't want to lose them, but we can't lose them. Um, and, and these types of protocols are in place no matter what really happens. We've identified three or four serious hazards that could happen and might happen in our valley, or up, I'm sorry, our town. That might take out part of our infrastructure, maybe the town office, maybe the fire hall. Whatever it is, whatever it is, we have a plan in place when that and if that happens. And it's all spelled out in that business plan in point form, which can always be evaluated. It's a, it's a work in progress at all times, and that's why we look at that stuff every year and we update it every year and we get it approved every year. That's that's what we have to do. This stuff changes. Um, little things. Uh, veterans Hall, of course, is pretty much uh, totally governed by the health orders. They're just going over and above uh, a lot of stuff in there. As the bookings, the things they've done around there are, are admirable. The pool, of course, is closed, but it would be essentially governed by the Provincial Health Orders and the Health Act in what they're going to be able to do when they will. Um, fire Hall, the fire department is obviously a uniquely different workplace than the rest of the Thomas One River. And the fire chief's implemented his own COVID 19 policies. Uh, an action plan, and I got a copy of that with me if anybody cares to see it. It's very in depth. He shut the fire hall down, anyone but EMS and fire hall personnel. He's way out of the front of this, and he's <coughs> not risking anybody and any firefighter getting sick off of that facility. So, um, the administrative office, you, uh, you've seen a lot of things we've done here. Uh, we had to close an office for a short time earlier this year. We open it again, we change the signages as needed, we put up plexiglass to protect the workers inside, we put up social distancing marks, we put up hand sanitizer. Um, and the people are allowed to come in here now. I don't see a reason for shutting it down again unless somebody maybe contracts it from here. <laughs> but uh, for I think we can stay open. I think that's the reason why we would have to close the door again. Um, but because the staff are well protected. Um, signages, uh, hand sanitizer, they're wiping surfaces, uh, wearing masks is mandatory now coming in the front doors. Public's mandatory, that's the law right now. Council chambers, of course, have all been proactive in, in wiping their areas. Every day when we come in here, we wipe down after the end meetings, council meetings. I, I'm absolutely certain we're all doing that. And so this is how this area has been looked after. We've been finding products, we've been finding masks, and we've been finding PPE, <laughs> things that we need to keep people. And so we've tried to keep a, a stockpile, and they, every department's been trying to you know, make sure they have what they need. Um, 
So we continue to encourage our staff to wear a mask, especially when entering stores and other places. They have to now, even before they didn't have to. I prefer to be a state of orange, my feeling, um, because people were obeying the rules when we were in orange. As soon as we lifted that, all oh that. <laughs> so now we're trying to scramble back to orange level eventually again. Yeah, so, uh, we've had. Uh, Signs of mandatory washing hands, coughing to sleep, stay home and feel sick. Encourage the staff to use the online COVID 19 assessment tool, and I will sit down with them and do it with them if they want. And I have. Um, we also have a plan as employees are driving off the COVID. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle them? What's the next step? We have a plan for that. Um, what else? Um, we have a plan for use of sick time if necessary. Um, options for working at home for those that can or set up to do so. Um, and I don't know, just to, I, you know, I tend to drag on, but um, in concluding with this, and before I even want any questions of me, uh, I just want to say that the Palace Hunters staff and management has been out in front of this from day one. Starting with uh, a, a CEO, CAO Crow, and uh, it's carried through with the other staff. And, and truly, we, we maybe slackened off a little bit, but we pretty much kept an eye on the ball here. And, I, and I, I can't speak of what happens in the rest of the community. I can only speak as a emergency coordinator and a safety officer. My primary goal is the staff that comes from here and what we do and how it affects our operations. So, um, I, I'm open to any questions. If I can answer, I'll be back. Okay, questions? Council White. Uh, three. Uh, water. Do we have any special plans for making sure our, the people who keep our water clean and flowing don't get COVID, or if they do, who's a backup? We have three operators that are trained to run that plant. Um, and as I had said, their, their work times are staggered. So they don't expose each other. They're not exposed to the other public works staff. We keep them separated as best we can. That's correct, right? That is correct. We have three three certified operators in the union. We have five total who are legally able to run the water treatment plant for the town soil. So we do have backups. Uh, we are looking at with the, with the rise in cases. You know, it's, it's kind of a it changes constantly when we look at options uh, like keeping a, one of them home if, if one was to get sick we would definitely want to have one uh, at home almost on like a reserve basis so all yeah all plans are being thought of in the worst case scenario and uh, we're making those putting them on paper as we go thank you that's excellent <coughs> uh, when you go to different rinks with different protocols are those protocols different enough that concerns you that are players, athletes could pick up COVID and bring it back if, if the protocols aren't as stringent as ours are, for example. Well, it is a, it is a concern, and every team is probably handling it a little differently. Mm -hmm. uh, as as a, a billet parent, I I have my concerns about things. We, we've done things the way we've done it. Uh, the boys have self-isolated. Not everybody has been doing that. Uh, although, again, following the provincial guidelines for cross-border movement, there are none. Um, you know, so these guys have come in here. I think a number of people have probably raised concerns about that. But we're well into that season now, and there haven't been any issues. So we're, we're comfortable that we have a bubble right now. Uh, you also mentioned uh, at our arena, Rank, that there was a few small glitches relative to distancing at the hockey games. I heard, heard that. I actually heard that. Uh, have you got? Are you, I'm assuming you're considering solutions to those small issues. And what could they be? Uh, well, again, they've already taken steps. Um, we were first allowed to have 400 people in the room. Uh, that was with the previous uh, orders. Now that's reduced to 25%, roughly 250 now. Uh, that's a that's a easily and manageable space right now. Um, 400 was a little tough, but again, as the guidelines have said, if you social distance two meters, 
if you can't wear a mask. Now the orders are saying something different because now we're in public gathering with more than So we need to try to social distance as well as wear a mask. So it, it has a ball. It really has a ball. And it's difficult because people want to sit together. And they do if they're kind of in the same family units, but um, there's nobody really going around. They're warned throughout the game not to get too close. Uh, if they're not wearing their mask, they could be asked to leave. Um, yeah, so they're but physically, have I seen anybody walking around doing that? No, I haven't. It's a difficult thing, and uh, I think I fall, fall back in the guidelines. If you can't make it six feet, then you wear a mask. If everybody's wearing a mask, See, I think I think that it's pretty safe. As a as a, as a citizen, as a counselor, I, I'm so very impressed with the presentation. It made me feel a lot better, a lot more secure. So please thank your, your team and of course yourself. That was uh, that was pretty impressive. I appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I I can say I am happy to answer questions. I I don't know them all, the answers to them all, but uh, anyway. We can do our best, and we'll say, yeah. without the rest of them knowing their business, I don't know anyone either. So, uh, anyone else? Thank you. Mr. Morio? Um, thank you very much for, for doing this. Like, sure. Um, I know it's, it's as the EMO coordinator and the safety thing, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that people don't see in the preparation and creating this document. I know exactly what goes into this document because I did it for 30 years. So yeah. it, uh, I know exactly the work and, the, and it, it's a, an evolving living document. As you said, orders change this document, it yeah. keeps up. And this is the second time we've it's been presented to us formally. Um, and I, I know that there is changes already from the original draft that has gone forward. So um, I like what I see and uh, I commend you and your cooperation with the rest of this, uh, the staff here in town that uh, there's a lot of work going on in the background um, to mitigate and deal with this stuff mm -hmm. that uh, keep our well, workers in. It, 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 it's hard on everybody. You know what? Uh, we've advocated right from the very start, and I haven't been afraid to brag to people what the Thomas Wonder has done right from the beginning. And I was bragging about the province too at the very start, <laughs> but nothing to brag about anymore. Yeah. So, uh, but the Thomas Wonder essentially as an entity in the municipal government, we've done an outstanding job in my opinion, and I see it from the inside. So. And like in this this document, like the cop business economy, it's not just COVID related. It's no. it's a flexible document that any crisis that's presented towards the town, um, it can be in, implemented at a moment's notice along with our emergency plans. And, uh, exactly. Thank you very much for doing that. Yes, uh, that's, what, that's what it's all about. So. Anybody else? All right, well, Mr. Kapatrick, thank you again. And, and I think it was mentioned that the pandemic has not been easy on anybody in this uh, municipality, this province, and the whole world. And for us to go through these, uh, these processes is very important. And I thank you and I thank all of the administration for doing what they can to keep all our employees and the people in town of this water are safe. Thank you. <clears throat> 8.2. Resolved that the town of Sorter must support the application for the Manitoba Government Fire Protection Grant to purchase four sets of replacement personnel protection equipment and is prepared to support any shortfall of the requested 14000 Moved by Council Morio, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor DeLaurier. Um, I guess possibly through the chair, uh, Council White, Chair of Protective Services, I had heard also that we would be uh, applying for this, using this, applying for this grant for the uh, the command truck we just bought. Is that going to be coming up as well? Uh, I'm not sure. An answer? Um, I asked uh, Chief Rochek, uh, since we have already purchased it, it doesn't have to. This is a a thing that hasn't been approved by council because we already had a resolution to purchase the truck. Um, this turnout gear is our next year's allotment that hasn't received budgetary or 
resolution, so that's why it needs to be here because um, anything that goes to this grant has to have support by council, and the command truck already has that support through its previous resolution. So, so we will still be applying that for the grant gone. already. So okay. This yeah. one will be, from what I understand, is going tomorrow morning as soon as we get if we get it uh, approval tonight. And this is um, hopefully to look after that annual four pieces of turnout gear that we do as the plan Woody explains okay. um, for it. So yeah. the main intent is for the main. This is a supplementary one. Um, he was advised to put in his main projects as he thought he could so, okay. um, by the organizers of that grant. So he's putting in multiple applications. Okay. Thank you. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.3. Resolved that the deadline to remove the garden box on the public reserve be extended to May 2021 at the request of Mr. Antoni due to weather and contractor availability. Moved by Councillor DeLaurier, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor DeLaurier? Uh, I propose we actually put a date in there like May, May 28th or something. Rather than just May. Okay. Um, you never know how spring is going to be, so I would suggest the 28th. I don't know if the seconder is willing to sure. change. Okay. Okay. So then we'll uh, set the date for May the, uh, what you say? 28th is the last Friday okay. of the month. So May the 28th, 2021. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten, ten point one. Result that counts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number twenty six eight oh nine to number twenty six eight nine three for a total of two hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred and twenty seven dollars and eighty two cents. Payroll accounts checks number forty seven forty seven to number forty seven fifty three for a total of eighty six thousand seven hundred and fifty seven and twenty six cents. Direct deposit transfers totaling eight eight hundred dollars, uh, which is the monthly cell phone allowances. Direct deposit transfer totaling eighteen thousand four hundred seventy five and ninety eight cents, and direct deposits for six thousand four hundred and sixty two dollars and thirty cents. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Discussion. the information there, checks explanations. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10. We have nothing for your camera today? Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay. See you. Okay. Resolved that pursuits of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Our camera, if we can take a break. <laughs>